So we're looking at stretching and shrinking, uh, investigation two, ace number 11. Study the patterns below. Which pairs seem to be similar figures? Now, <clears throat> in this case, uh, let's take a look at the rectangles. So in these rectangles, are there any rectangles that are obviously not the same shape? All rectangles have the same angle, so we can't look at the angles quite yet. And uh, L looking at them, they all basically look the same. So we need to figure out which ones are similar, and we can't just do it by using the eyeball test of seeing, oh, obviously it doesn't look the same. We have to look for a scale factor. So the first thing we need to do is let's compare co corresponding sides. So we have a 2 here and a 2 here. This means that for these two figures to be similar, Whatever you multiply 2 by to get 2, which obviously is 1, you'd have to multiply 6 by to get 4. Does that work? No, because 6 times 1 is 4. Is not 4. 6 times 1 is not 4. 6 times 1 is 6. So we know that rectangle A, B, C, D, and rectangle E, F, G, H are not similar. So let's take a look at E, F, G, H, and J, K, L, or I, J, K, L. So, <coughs> so corresponding sides here, again, they have the same side length of 6. So what would be the scale factor go from this one to this one? Well, it would be 1 if it's similar, because 1 times 6 is 6. But is 1 times 2, 3? No, it is not. So we know that these two are not similar. So let's take a look at something else. Let's, let's try this. What about going from the small to the big? So what would we multiply 2 by to get 3? Well, if you multiply 2 by 1.5, better known as 3 and over 2, you get 3. Let's see if it works for the other side length. 4 times 3 over 2. So how many times does 2 go into 4? Well, it goes in twice. So 2 times 3 is 6. Oh my goodness, it's 6. So these two are similar. Excellent. So the scale factor to go from a rectangle A, B, C, D to rectangle I, J, K, L is 3 halves. And we learned in class that if you go the opposite direction, the scale factor, is going to be the reciprocal. Well, what is the reciprocal of 3 halves? It's 2 thirds. <coughs> if we look for, uh, if we look at, uh, let's show what we look at. Let's look at the parallelograms. So this parallelogram here has a s side length of 4. So if this is similar to this uh, parallelogram, which obviously doesn't even look like the same shape, but I'll humor you on this one so we know it's not going to be similar. Uh, we'd uh, have a scale factor again, 3 over 2, because that's what happened over in this one. So is 3 over 2 times 4 3? No. So they're not similar. So let's see, uh, triangles, triangles. All right. <coughs> I can clearly see the triangle VWX is nothing like all the other triangles. It, it just doesn't look the same, so we know that this is not similar to anything else. And so, um, if I come over here, we have 5, 5, and 7, so we have two of the same side lengths. Here we have a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, as luck would have it. Here we have a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Hmm. Well, this is an isosceles triangle, because these side lengths are the same. And that doesn't occur in these. So we know that this is not similar. <coughs> now, these two triangles actually have the same side lengths. So they're not only similar, but they are congruent. Their scale factor to go from this to this is going to be 1. Because if you look at the short side versus the short side, what did I multiply 3 by to get 3? I multiplied it by 1. What did I multiply 4 by to get 4? 1. So 5 times 1 is 5. So here we have a scale factor of 1. Obviously, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So there we have it, problem 11.
explained.